Good evening, everybody. I am Ishani, intern at Lady Harding Medical College. The topic for my research is a hospital-based observational study of maternal knowledge, attitude, and practice of feeding children between 6 to 24 months. So now the first two years of life are considered as a window of critical opportunity. Why? Because the velocity of physical growth is high. Almost 90% of the brain is formed, which re uh, requiring 50 to 70% of the energy and essential fatty acids, which are provided from the diet. So if the diet is inappropriate in quality or quantity, it will lead to faltering of growth and development, which will further lead to malnutrition and the developmental delay. So some of the definitions which are used were minimum dietary diversity, where the children 6 to 23 months of age were uh, receiving food from 4 out of 7 food groups during the previous day. Uh, in minimum meal frequency, it was a proportion of breastfed and non-breastfed children 6 to 23 months of age who were receiving a minimum number of times. That is, for 6 to 8 months, it was 2 to 3 meals per day. And for 9 to 23 months, it was 3 to 4 meals per day with 1 to 2 additional snacks. And the minimal acceptable diet was the combination of both of them. So it was uh, given by the WHO. So the thing is, we have the feeding guidelines by the WHO, IVSCF, and they should directly translate into adequate dietary fulfillments and proper nutrition. However, it is not happening so. In 2018, WHO reported that undernutrition is associated with 45% of child deaths. So where is the gap? The objective of my study is to assess the knowledge, attitude, and practice of mothers related to feeding practices of children between 6 to 24 months using a KP questionnaire and to determine the magnitude of children between 6 to 24 months who are receiving age-inappropriate diets by performing a gap analysis. So I did a cross-sectional based study at, in the pediatric wards of Kalavati Saran over two months and included all those children uh, uh, 6 to 24 months of age within 24 hours of admission and excluded all those who had either already received the professional dietary counseling or were severely ill or whose mothers were unavailable. So the sample size using openepi.com and taking a confidence interval of 95%, the prevalence of children receiving age inappropriate diet to be 90% and precision 5%, the sample size came out to be 139. I recruited all the children on the basis of an opportunity. So the, uh, development of items. Now I divided my questionnaire into three sections. Section A comprised of the demographic details, which were of, uh, uh, consisted of parental, child and family details. Section B comprised of the clinical details which consisted of the anthropometry and general physical examination. And section C of the KP questionnaire whose language chosen was Hindi and the format was both open-ended and closed-ended questions. In the KP questionnaire, it was divided into knowledge, attitude and practice. In knowledge, I asked about breastfeeding, the quality, quantity and frequency of complementary feeding and the manner in which the child is fed. In the attitude, I chose uh, uh, whether uh, the mother was feeding during illnesses or the child was bottle fed or not and the continuation and consistency of complementary feeding. And in the practice, it was a 24 hour uh, recall method where I asked for the frequency of breastfeeding, the quality, quantity fre and frequency of complementary feeding, the hygiene, the type of supervision. I interpreted all the data according to the WHO IVCF recommendations. Now my primary outcome variables of interest were proportion of mothers with inappropriate knowledge, with inappropriate attitude, inappropriate practices related to diet and feeding, and proportion of children receiving age inappropriate diets on gap analysis. The secondary outcome variables of interest were proportion of underweight, stunted, and children with wasting and uh, children with severe acute malnutrition. So the scheme was, I recruited 150 children out of which 10 were excluded due to the exclusion criteria. Enrolled study population was 140. After taking an informed consent and doing a demographic and clinical details, I documented them in a case recording form and then administered a KAP questionnaire. I simultaneously also did the anthropometry and general, general physical examination. All the data was collected and managed in Excel sheets and it was statistically analyzed. Coming to the results. Now in the knowledge, 85.7% was considered as inappropriate. Any deviation from the WHO IVCF recommendations was considered as inappropriate. So 85.7% had inappropriate knowledge, 42.8% uh, had inappropriate attitude, and 85.7% had uh, mothers had inappropriate practice. 
Coming to the dietary indicators, the minimum dietary diversity was less than 50%, that is 45.7%. Minimum meal frequency was came out to be 20.7%, and minimum acceptable diet came out to be 14.2%. Uh, we can, from the malnutrition, around 60, more than 60% of the children had uh, were un either underweight or stunted, wasted, or had severe acute malnutrition. So, conclusion. There is a widely prevalent lack of knowledge, negative attitude and poor practice regarding the quantity and quality of complementary feeding. And we can also see high numbers of malnutrition in children. So it establishes a probable association between inadequate KP of mothers and malnutrition. So what are the implications? So despite large number of government programs and initiatives which are aimed at nutrition of child, there is a very little corresponding and parallel impro improvement in nutritional status of children. The primary uh, caregiver, that is usually the mother, is probably unaware of what comprises an adequate nutritious diet and or has misconceptions related to diet that translates into poor practice. A malnourished child with decreased potential for optimal growth and development will have futuristic financial implications on the national gross domestic product. So uh, uh, a new strategy needs to be devised to bridge this gap. Uh, thank you.